All right, there's a new gadget show in our midst, and it's helmed by arguably one of the most recognizable names in tech right now. Mark Gurman from Bloomberg is here to tell us all about it. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. That means a lot coming from you guys. Abs well, absolutely. It's great to have you here. We really appreciate it. And we're super stoked to see uh, the, your new show on Bloomberg. Give us a kind of the skinny on uh, Gadgets with Gurman, what, what it's all about. Right. So the show aims to take a look at a new piece of technology every week. Sometimes we're going to do one device. Other times we're going to do multiple devices, depending on the category. And we're aiming to sort of show things exclusively, show things that people haven't shown before. So, for example, we had the Galaxy S8 on yesterday, and people really like the interactivity of the episode. Uh, we try to put in some interaction with the audience, allow them to uh, ask questions and sort of, you know, talk to us, but also talk to the device in a way and really try to get a feel for it, even though they're just watching it online. So you've got this on, on Bloomberg, the Bloomberg site, obviously, but you're also using a lot of the other kind of live video uh, tools and services. I know Periscope uh, has right. it on there. Is that kind of how you're taking feedback from uh, from the people who are watching? Right. So we're using, like you said, Twitter's Periscope, which is a really great platform for this kind of stuff. Facebook Live, the, the results have been amazing so far. It's really exciting. Uh, the engagement has been wonderful on Facebook. Uh, in particular, people are really staying for the entire live show. People really want to just hear what's next. And you know, we've really gotten so much great feedback, nothing negative, uh, really. So we still, I believe, have a lot to improve on. I think it's going to get better over time, but so far I think it's it's been going really great. And yet, like you said, it's on the Bloomberg website, of course, the Bloomberg terminal, which is the best way to watch it, and uh, online platforms. So I noticed when I watched the first episode, uh, you took a lot of questions. Were you taking them from Facebook and from Periscope and from Bloomberg, from the Bloomberg site as well? Where were the, all the questions coming from? Well, actually, it's actually very interesting. When we announced it earlier yesterday morning online and on my Twitter, people just started tweeting me uh, personally questions and actually emailing them in to me and to the producers and others at, at Bloomberg. A lot of people were really instantly excited to hear about the show. Over the course of the show, a lot of comments went to Facebook uh, and Twitter as well. Nice. So um, so you mentioned, uh, and obviously we're seeing it here, you cover the Samsung Galaxy S8, the S8 Plus on your inaugural episode. Uh, obviously a very anticipated product. I can't wait to get mine here in a couple of weeks. How do you, if you, if you don't mind giving us a, a little bit of insight in, as far as how you feel about the hardware and the time that you've had with it so far, what do you think? Right. I, I think the S8 is a cool phone. And like I said on the show, I think it's beginning a new trend of phones with taller displays, OLED displays, thinner bezels. We saw the LG G6 phone earlier this year. Uh, there's a Xiaomi phone that has a similar design. Andy Rubin, the founder of Android, is coming out with a phone with very slim bezels in the not-too-distant future as well. And I think Samsung is getting there first in terms of on the high end and the mass market devices. And we'll see what Apple has up its sleeve uh, for the fall. Um, as you said in the show, and we mentioned yesterday, the Bixby voice won't be available when the phone first comes out. But the the, the AI is already there. What do you think about the AI? Is, is it better than the Google Assistant? You know, I think the Bigsby overall umbrella term is, is a marketing term for many different artificial intelligence programs on the phone. I think the voice thing, the Siri-like interface is the most critical element of it. So it's a shame that it's not ready for launch. But some of the other Bigsby stuff, like the vision feature, you know, we showed it on air. Actually, a lot of people made comments about this. We took a picture of some Oikos yogurt. I said it was my favorite yogurt on the show. People thought that was, you know, a marketing stunt, but it wasn't. And <laughs> You could take a picture of it and uses its AI intelligence to take you to Amazon's website by scanning the barcode to do a, par, a price comparison. So I do think it's pretty neat. That was going to be my question if it was sponsored by, by Oikos uh, Yogurt. But it's good to know that that was just an honest opinion. Well, about I, mean, the yogurt. It is, it is, I mean, I'm not sponsored either and I would agree you like it's it. pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, as far as all the features of the S8, the, obviously Bixby is getting a lot of airtime, probably partially at this point because of the fact that it's going to be somewhat crippled when it launches with the show. But is it, is it worthy of, of a lot of the press? I mean, there's, there's other comparisons to Bixby that are already existing on the phone. And, and the fact of the matter is, I would imagine the S8 already has some of those <laughs> competing uh, features on the device to fill in the gap. I mean, is that a big deal? No, it has Google Assistant built in as well. And Google Assistant has been praised left and right by every tech reviewer you can think of. Uh, 
you know, a really big Siri competitor, competitor to Amazon Alexa. So I think it's interesting, and we're not going to see this until, you know, late spring, maybe May, June, when this Bigsby software actually hits. But having Google Assistant and Bigsby on the same device, that's going to be an interesting war right. uh, in itself. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, I mean, it's, it's safe to say you're pretty known in the tech world for your exclusives and for your insight behind the scenes. How much of, of that kind of news uh, will make its way into the show on a weekly basis? Or is that more or less reserved for the writing that you're doing and uh, and going forward that way? That's a great question. I appreciate that. Well, I mean, what we're trying to do here at Bloomberg is bring the news and the content to all of our platforms. Like we like to call it on Bloomberg, right? So we want this show, for instance, to be live on all those platforms, but we also have a distilled 90 second quick version that's really a recap of the show that goes to our other digital platforms and onto the Bloomberg website. And that's going to be spread around really quickly. I think that's a big component of it. And just like that, we want the news everywhere too. So we want the news on broadcast. We want the news on digital. We want it in Business Week, the magazine. Uh, we want it on the website. So I think you're going to see some news quickly creep its way into the digital shows as well. And when we start syndicating onto the Bloomberg Broadcast TV, I think you're going to see a mix of the news and the new consumer gadget elements together. Nice. Um, I want to add another question about the S8. Uh, you say in your new show that you don't think that it will have the same battery problem uh, as, you know, the, <laughs> the, hope so. the Note 7. Um, but but can, can you talk a little bit about why you think that, um, why you're, you're bullish on the battery you know, I'll tell you why. This is an example that you know I sometimes use about any any problem. So there is a mall near my house in L.A., and for years there were no stop signs. Like okay, this is a mall; it's the Grove, right? You can drive through the mall. There's like a market there, and for years, the first five or so years when this mall was open, cars can just drive through. There was no patrolman. There was no stoplights or anything like that. Not really a monitored stop sign. And then one day, I someone, I think, got hit or almost got hit. And then from there on out, they have a patrol person, they have lights, right? When a problem happens, all efforts go in to make sure the problem doesn't happen again. So I'd be highly surprised if there was a similar battery issue again, given that this already happened. So Yeah, and, and <laughs> Samsung, of all people, of all companies, understands the weight of the eyeballs that are bearing deep within their soul right now, uh, waiting right. for anything like that to happen with this device. So I'm sure they, I, I imagine, and, and they've talked a lot about their their kind of quality assurance, their quality control on the back end. They're probably the safest manufacturer at this point, at least one would hope. But hey, you never know. Uh, batteries are That's crazy what things. When you make a mistake, you yeah. try not to make it again. So absolutely. I'll take their word for it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, anything uh, that you want to mention about the show as far as like anything you have on the pipeline uh, coming up, things for people to look forward to? Sure. Uh, thanks for that. It's, you know, we're very excited. Uh, we have episodes and scripts written for, you know, weeks ahead. We have so many cool products in the pipeline. Uh, so many discussions we're having right now with companies. So we're, we're chock full of content. Uh, for the foreseeable future. And I think the show's going to improve on a weekly basis. So I'm really excited to grow with the show and I'll let the show to build up an audience over time. And I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone watching it. And, you know, thank you so much for having me on to talk about it. It means Absolutely. a lot. And I appreciate it. Well, will we see products that um, like the S8 that aren't available yet? Or are you going to be doing product reviews or roundups of things that can be purchased right when they watch the show? It's going to be a mix. So Ideally, we're going to have a lot of stuff that's not out yet, stuff that's coming in the near future uh, in terms of the show's time frame. But we're also going to have products that are already released uh, for weeks when there is not a new product. It's not every week that a blockbuster new product hits the market. Right. So there's going to be weeks where we're going to have unique roundups, unique comparisons. And of course, people are coming for our smart take as well. So we might have a product that already came out a few months earlier. But we think a smart take is very valuable because they all have life cycles. And another thing we're doing is cost analysis. Not everyone buys an iPhone day one. So how much will an iPhone cost you if you buy it now? What do you do when the next iPhone comes out? So we're going to play around a lot with that. Right on. Uh, Mark Gurman, always a pleasure getting you on. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to, to join us and talk about your new show. Congratulations.